<laughs> so, please pull out your laptop if you have not done that already. Welcome to the JV lecture. It's going to be talking about how to answer critiques and how to run framework on the affirmative. I'll give y'all a couple seconds. Your critique doesn't solve anything. 
you should not say things like, your identity does not matter. Because of course your identity matters, right? You cannot separate the political from the person. Have you ever heard that quote before? Kind of. Like when it comes to that, there's like general truths that are just like, are just true. Like there's just things that, like some things that you just can't debate. So for example, like talking about blackness or like indigenous people, you can't just say, well, I think indigenous people are making a bigger deal out of it than it is. No, because the truth is, the general truth is they, they struggle. There's violence against them. Right. So that's, that's what truth, that's where truth comes in. Who remembers what the truth versus technique was? Oh, that like, that like, instead of looking at it as a more like technical way of debate or like it comes down to like, if this was closed off, if this was answered, all of that, like if it's properly, like if it's technically correct on the flow. But if it's the truth, it's more of like, you're looking more to the truth of it and that like, even though like, technically it looks good, like at the end of the day, it's not the truth. I think so. Mostly it's just like, there's just things that are true. Like things are, for example, things are like harder for black people than they are for white people. And that's the unfortunate truth of things. Like you can't just say, no, white people have it just as difficult. Because like truth be told, white people didn't have to deal with slavery. They're not dealing with the effects of slavery. They're not dealing with the effects of Jim Crow laws. They're not dealing with any of that. Right. So, that, right. You don't want to ever make it seem like somebody's identity or somebody's Social location, right, does not matter. Because everybody in the debate room matters. Whether or not your opponents are being rude to you, whether or not you have some personal beef between the people you're debating, whether or not you've had a judge that you hate having in the back over and over again, right? It's like, just because there might be some like competitive aspect of the debate, that should not make you antagonistic toward people's identities, right? So you don't want to say people's identities don't matter, because that's just not true, right? And that's very harmful to say. You all are amazing, you know, people who should not be discounted as anything less than that, right? So using terms such as like your identity doesn't matter in this debate can be inherently harmful to the people who are debating, right? Because lots of people's identities are tied to the debate, especially on this resolution, right? When we're talking about economic inequality, lots of the time people's social location and people's identities will come up just because of the structure of economics, right? There are some people who are less fortunate than others within current systems, which means that identity is a very key place to analyze the topic. So when you say things like your identity doesn't matter, it can be harmful. The next one, I've heard multiple times, right? Go protest to debate. Debate is not a place to protest your personal beliefs, right? It's a place for competition. This is harmful. Right? Do I have anybody who can understand why this might be harmful to say? Yes? It's like saying, go like spend your time elsewhere instead of the meeting. Right, like you shouldn't be here doing this, right? You should go somewhere else, which is like inherently exclusive to people who want to bring their identities into the debate space, right? Like, debate should be a place for testing all strategies, right? And testing all methods. So if people are being like, hey, you don't belong here, you should go somewhere else, or your argument has no place here, you should leave and go do like a protest or something, it shows that the debate has become very antagonistic and violent to the people who are debating in it, right? Debate should be used for people to express themselves, not always in like an identity form, right? But just like in ways that they want to just yell at things, right? Or people just want to argue. Right? So when you tell people that you should go somewhere else and do your action rather than do it here, it makes debates exclusionary to the people who have correct ties to it. Right? You don't want to ever tell people they should go do something else than not be in the debate. Right? You can say that they can do things a different way right, in debate, but you never want to inherently say that people should go do something else and take their stuff somewhere else rather than not be here. Um, the next one, we do not want to hear you cry about your issues. Same thing with the stuff above. You don't want to make people seem like they're just whining, like Isai said earlier, right? Like, you want to make sure that these people are heard, but you can still keep that competitive aspect where it's like, hey, I hear you, but this is not the right approach because of X, Y, and Z. There are very respectful ways to respond to critiques, but oftentimes, lots of people like doing messed up things to people. Next is woke. Woke is just really cringe. Like, I, I hate that word, and like, I just don't think it's like, I think it's representing people in a bad way rather than a good way, right? Like, when you hear a bunch of like, like, white, like, redneck, like, conservatives, like, all oh, these woke people are like doing this, this, and that, right? It's like, yeah, people are fighting for human rights. I don't know why that's cringy, 
you know, like, there should be no reason why, like, trying to live, right, and trying to be, like, a decent human should be, like, this foreign concept of being woke. And just woke is just really used to, like, target people who are trying to push beyond certain boundaries, right, that have been can, kept, like, normative to certain structures. Um, and the last one should be pretty simple. Please refer from using any slurs or derogatory language or sentences that can be violence to debaters or people generally in the room, right? There is sometimes be...
And the critique, as you all heard of earlier with the critique lecture that was a couple days ago, is that the critique consists of a link argument, an impact argument, and an alternative argument, right? The alternative says that instead of doing the app, we should do a different method, right? Do we know um, the difference between a critique alternative and a counterclaim? I know our lab talked about this. Okay, cool. Let me make that distinction very clear, okay? A counter plan says that instead of doing the ask plan, we should do a different plan through the United States federal government, right? So it's proposing a different plan that the USFD or the federal government should do. The alternative says instead of doing the plan, we should focus on different practices and those practices usually focus on things that are not the federal government, right? Or using or doing a plan to the federal government, right? So the critique alternative is like, instead of doing government action, we're gonna do something else. The counter plan says that we should still do government action, but just through a different way, or a different method, or a different plan. Does that make sense, kind of? So it's like, the alternative says that we should do a different method that's not federal government action most of the time, the counter plan says that we should do a different plan through the federal government. So usually you'll hear like critiques be like government bad, and you'll hear a counter plan be like governments are good. Does that make sense kind of? So it's just like alternatives usually are like government bad, counter plans like the government's good, we should still use it. So it's very different when you are reading or answering a critique. Most alternatives are going to be about we should have a different epistemology when it comes to interrogating the resolution or the plan, right? We should think of the plan a different way. And usually most of these times, the alternative will not be a career or will not be a physical action, but rather a mindset shift, right? Or something to do with epistemology or the way that we construct knowledge. So for example, let's say the alternative on critique is like, the alternative is that we should reject the affirmative plan, right? What offense do you think the app can say against that? Can you repeat the question? What was it? Can you repeat the question? What do you think an affirmative team can say against a critique that says that we should reject the app? Or actually, let me think about it like this, right? What if the negative team is like, we should reject your plan because your plan is not real? You're not a real policymaker. Nothing's going to happen once the round ends. Right, like we should not sit here and waste our time with hypothetical government plans. It'd be pretty hard to argue against that, right? Because like just what do you say? Like, you do pass the policy? Like, I know all of you are way too young to be in Congress. So like none of you are actually passing real plans, right? Like, it's hard. It's a hard argument. But what framework says through the affirmative says that we should be able to test the hypothetical implications of whatever the app is trying to advocate. Right? So it simply just says like we should be able to test the method of the app through this debate. Right? We should be able to think about and debate about whether or not the plan should pass and we should be able to actually talk about the impacts that might happen if the plan doesn't happen. Right? So there are a lot of different cases that flower reject the app, right? Like reject the app, blah blah blah. But the app framework usually gives the affirmative team a route to be able to win their impacts that or a route to be able to win that their impact should be considered, such as nuclear war or extinction, right? Obviously, when y'all debate, nuclear war doesn't actually happen, right? But it's still good to debate about those things. So framework says that we should be able to frame the debate about whether or not the plan might be a good idea and whether or not these impacts should or might happen, even if they don't end up happening, right? We should be able to role play as policymakers to be able to test our hypothetical plans through the USFT, right? So, lots of the times, if you can't win framework when you're on the affirmative, it becomes very hard for you to win debate against critiques, right? Because if you can't win that you shouldn't be able to test the method or the impact of your app, then what do you have, right? Like, if the negative is like, you shouldn't get to talk about your plan and you don't win the argument, then they're gonna be like, well, you lost that we shouldn't think about your plan, so we probably shouldn't think about your plan, right? So winning framework against K teams or critical negative teams 
is very key when it comes to answering whatever the critique is saying. So, this is usually a 2AC framework example against a critique. So the first thing it starts off with is the interpretation, right? The interpretation just says most of the time that the app should get to weigh the hypothetical impacts of the plan against a competitive alternative. Do we have any idea what this might mean, the interpretation part? That the permitter should be able to like be able to use their impacts. That even though it's hypothetical, like that the impact, that even if it's, if the uh, the debate if the framework becomes hypothetical, that like we should still be able to like do like against their K. Yeah, exactly, right? Even if it's imaginary, even if it's fake, we should still be able to debate about whether or not it might happen if the plan is in the past, right? Debate is not going to translate into any material policy action right away. We all know that, right? But what's the point of debating under this format if we can't see whether or not the plan might or might happen, right? What's the point of walking into a debate round and debating about an AF if we can't even debate about the hypothetical in the first place, right? The entire debate is built off of this hypothetical scenario. So how does the app debate or win if you can't even begin to test that scenario in the first place, right? So framework just argues that the only way the app can win a debate or even debate in the first place is if we test whether or not these impacts may or may not happen in this imaginary plan, right? Yes, we are not policymakers, but we are people who are learning about policy and we should be able to learn and test whether or not these plans may or may not be a good idea. Because if we can't, there's no debate to be had, right? Most of the time, especially in JV, every single app is going to have an imaginary hypothetical plan and debate about whether or not it's good or bad. If the negative gets to say, no, we're not going to do that, then the debate for the affirmative becomes almost impossible to win because the only way that they get to win is if they prove that their plan's a good idea. So if they cannot test whether or not the app's a good idea or not, how does the app even begin to potentially maybe win the debate, right? The entire debate for the affirmative rests on this plan. If the app doesn't get to use that plan or test it, there is no way for an affirm team to win. So framework just makes the argument that the app should be able to test the imaginary implications of the plan against a competitive alternative, right? We should be able to see if the app's plan is better than whatever the alternative provides, right? Let's say, for example, if the alter alternative is like, we should change our education about how we view the plan, right? Framework would argue that, yeah, we can debate about that, but we should be able to weigh or test our impacts against that alternative. Right? To see which one is a better idea. Right? Because even if it's just like education in this round versus a hypothetical plan, we should still be able to test which one is better or not. Because if we can't test which one is better, then the affirmative team can never have anything to win. Right? The app can only win if the plan is a good idea. So the framework says that we should be able to see if that's a good idea against different critique alternatives. Right? There are a couple reasons or impacts to this, right? So the fairness part says that the app always has to defend a hypothetical government action, right? Not being able to do that means that the affirmative team loses every single time because how does the app win? The app has to affirm a plan to win. So if the app can't even begin to read that plan, then how does the app win, right? The affirmative team says that if we cannot weigh our impacts, then that's not fair to us, right? It'd be super unfair to every app team if they couldn't get access to their plan because all the affirmative has, right? The negative only job is to prove that the affirmative is a bad idea. So that could be anything, right? That could be the plan is a bad idea, we shouldn't debate about it at all in like a metaphysics sense, right? It can be a DA where it says that the plan crashes the economy and the economy needs nuclear war, right? Like the negative has the ability to win the debate when we're talking about what the plan might be or talk about why the plan's imaginary is bad, right? Those are two different levels that the negative team can beat the app on, right? But the app is stuck with affirming the plan and saying the plan's a good idea. So the interpretation 
says that the apps should be able to weigh the plan against the alternative, and if they don't, there are two major impacts, right? Do we have any other ideas for why, like, not being able to weigh the plan might be unfair? Or, like, why the app not being able to, like, go for the plan might be unfair? The app not being able to go for the plan? Yeah. Like, the app not, like, let's say, for example, the alternative is, like, the app should not be able to test their plan at all. Right? Then it's just, like, well, that, that's the only thing they have. That's the only thing they have, right? Like, what do you mean we don't get to wait? That's, like, that, that's my house, my car. Like, what do you mean you're taking my car from me? Like, that's all I have, right? So it's like the ability for the negative to take away the ability for the app to test the plan means that the app loses every single time because that's all the app has, right? Second is education. Education just makes the argument that learning about the potential outcomes of potential policies is a good thing because we learn lots of education, right? I bet y'all when y'all debate about these plans, y'all learn things that y'all never knew before, right? When I was debating the water topic, I didn't know what fracking was, right? And I debated about it, and I'm like, oh, I know what these things are, right? So debating about certain plans and certain resolutions is a good thing because you learn different things that you did not have access to before, right? And it allows you to educate yourself on topics that usually are not accessible to people. Right? So if we cannot debate about whether or not the plan is a good idea, we lose out on all the education that we learn from debating that plan. Right? So debating about the plan is key, not only because it's the only way for the app to defend themselves in the debate, but also because there is key education that we learn from debating about the app. If we do not debate about the app, we do not get that education, which is net worse than not doing it. Right? It's better to learn about it than to not learn about it. Right? So learning about these debates is a good thing. Then the last part is just going to be preferred. Right? You should prefer our interpretation. It's the most fair. Right? So the preferred part just gives reasons for why you should prefer whatever the interpretation is saying versus whatever the critique is saying. Right? So it's like, instead of not letting us weigh our app, prefer our interpretation because the most fair to us and policy making skills are good. That makes sense so far? So framework is just like, in a nutshell, the interpretation just says what the app should be able to do in the context of the plan and the debate. The standard or the impacts can be different, right? But the two that I chose for the example is like, we lose fairness and we lose our education, right? And then, for our interpretation, right, it's most real world, it's the most fair, right? Like, if we don't do it, bad things happen. You have any questions so far? Kind of makes sense so far. You have is something not making sense from this so far. Yeah. Was there a framework on yesterday's debate? Um. Yeah, there was. Give an example. Sure. So it was pretty much the same as this, right? It was just like the app should be able to weigh poverty, right, and racism against the impact of the critique, right? And they should be able to test which one is better, which one is worse, right? So when I was negative in the debate yesterday, when I was answering this, right, when I was negative, I was just like, yeah, that's fair. The app should be able to weigh the plan. Won't matter because I'll win my impacts outweigh anyways, right? But like, yes, I'll concede to their framework and they get to weigh their plan, right? Most of the time, framework really only becomes a big deal in these K debates where the alternative is just like, no, we should not be able to test the app at all. Like, whenever we critique takes a hard stance on like, no, we should not debate about this, and no, your impact or fake, it doesn't mean anything, this is really where framework comes in handy, right? But most of the time, your debates aren't gonna be like, super duper, like, framework compliant, but it definitely is like an aspect that the 2AC and the 1AR needs to have. Any other questions? No. Curtis. What are some examples of those interpretations that you talk about that limit up your permit from talking about like what sure. you want to talk about? So I think that like lots of teams, especially critical teams, will premise lots of their arguments just based off of like debating this is bad, your impacts are not real, and your impact being framed as real is what allows other violence to happen and be maxed, right? For example, when we talk about extinction, right? and the end of the world for everybody, we trade off our focus with the people who are living through extinction right now, right? For example, there are lots of rich people who think that if they don't have money, 
or if some nuclear war happens, right, that will be the end of the way they live life. But there are people right now who are going through crises that are not deemed as important because everybody's not dead, right? Mind you, lots of the time when people predict that extinction is going to happen, how many times does it happen? Okay, cool, right? I, I dare somebody to name me one extinction scenario that's happened in the past, like, any time. I'll wait. He saw you, bro. People die? No, extinction. Like, everybody's dead. Oh. But name to me how many times somebody, like, like extinction's happened. The black people. That's not, did everybody die? Dinosaurs? Then that's true. Okay, yeah, the dinosaurs. How long ago was that? A few billion years. Okay, when's the last time this happened since the dinosaurs? None, right? So it's like the ability for people to preach about extinction coming, like every single topic, right, allows for there not to be any attention given to the people who are actually living through end of the world scenarios, right? For example, people who get kicked out of their house and homeless, right? It's like they have to now live through their version of the end of the world. That's not seen as important, right? Because everybody's not there. So lots of the time, critiques make critical perspective that's like your scenarios are not real and you trying to push them as important directly trades off with our ability to focus on the people who are living through different extinction crises. Does that make sense? So it's like lots of critiques will say that your focus is bad and we should redirect our focus toward a different issue. I mean, does that answer your question already? Yeah. Okay, cool. So do we understand that framework? Right? We should get to weigh the app against whatever the impact of the critique are, and we should be able to weigh... Oh, yes. Sorry, I had a question regarding the education framework. Yeah. Because I know you, it says 2AC framework, but shouldn't the debate, like, in one of the main debates, like, the education, like, mm -hmm. topic, and I was just wondering, like, is it the same for both? Well, it can be a little the same, but oftentimes it's, like, because of different things. Right? So for example, people will say that we lose education because we don't get to run the app, right? But people can also say we lose education if people run like 30 million arguments and expect everybody to respond to every single one, right? So like education usually has the same impact, but certain things and different things can impact education. Does that make sense? So it's like, it probably was about education, like in what the negative said, but I think what happened was like we had different claims for why we either like get education or lose education. So like, we can gain or lose education from multiple things. But like, this is just one example of how you can. That makes sense? So, framework, right? The app should be able to weigh the hypothetical impacts against a competitive critique, right? There are impacts or good things that we get from doing such, and there are reasons why we should prefer. Let's talk about the next. We are doing F postal, we did F, we're not at the P part, okay? So, can somebody tell me what the P stands for? Permutation. The permutation, right? What is the permutation? Somebody here needs to know what permutation is because they'll have a tournament in like a couple days, yes? Oh, it's when you do the plan and the CPM. Cool, right? It's when you do the plan and the counter plan together. But in this context, it's not doing the counter plan, right? It's doing the AFS plan and the critique together, right? So the permutation just says that we can do and still implement the plan while still doing the critique's method at the same time, right? There are a couple examples through this. The first one is permutation do both, right? Let's say, for example, the alternative is we should change our epistemology or orientation towards X, right? Permutation do both would argue that we can still do the plan and change our education at the same time, right? They're not mutually exclusive. We can do both of these things at the same time because they are compatible. They work together, right? And it's the best of both worlds. We can solve for all the impacts of the critique while still solving for the hypothetical ones that the affirmative bring, right? The second one is permutation do the act, right? Let's say, for example, um, the AF is an AF about giving back indigenous land to indigenous people, right? Let's say that's what the app says. Then, let's say that the critique says that settler colonialism is bad and we should always think to decolonize, 
right? Do we think those two are compatible? Uh, do we think that giving indigenous land back and trying to decolonize lands can be compatible? Yeah, right? Like they are compatible. So what permutation duty AF would argue is that the AF was already an example of whatever the critique is saying, right? If the AF is like we should give free education to all people, and the alternative is like we should educate ourselves, it's like cool. The AF was already a form of education, right? So permutation duty AF is good because the AF was already an example or a method of whatever the alternative is acting or advocating for, right? So permutation the app is like the alternative where the app is already an example of whatever the alternative is advocating for, which means that we can do both because they're pretty much the same. The app is already that from the beginning. The third is permutation do the app and then the alternative, right? Let's say for example, the app was UBI, right? Like we should give universal basic income to everybody. And then the critiques alternative is like we should have a communist party and a communist revolution. Permutation do the AF and the ALT would be like we should first give everybody UBI and after we do that then we should have the socialist revolution. Right? We should do the AF first and then the alternative after or later because we still think the plan is a good idea. Right? So it's like we can do the AF first and then we can do whatever the critique says because that's like the best of both worlds. They don't interfere and plus Doing the plan first is a good thing because we still think the people should get the benefits of the plan, right? The last one is permutation, do the AF, do the land of the alternative, right? So let's say for example, the alternative is like we should change our rhetoric towards X, Y, and Z, right? We should change the reasoning for why we do things. The permutation would argue that we can still do the plan while changing our rhetoric. Right? We can use that lens of whatever the critique says and still implement that to do the app. Right? So we should take the mindset of whatever the critique is saying and we should apply that to doing the affirmative. That make sense? Questions about that? Yes. Would you like to that? Okay. Sure. No, it's all good. So let's say, for example, uh, let's use yesterday's debate as an example. Right? So let's say, Diego is doing the UBI stuff, right? Or the basic income stuff. And I was going for the cap K, and I said that we should do communist organizing as an alternative, right? An example of permutation do the AF through the lens of the alternative would be like, we should still do the AF through a communist view because UBI is inherently communist because of X, Y, and Z, right? So you're using the rhetoric and the methodology of whatever the alternative is saying but we're still doing the ask plan. That makes sense? So it's like, we should use the mindset of the critique while doing that through the alternative, or through the app, right? So we should take the rhetoric and frame that through the lens of whatever the app is. That make more sense? So it's like, really used yeah, honestly, I think it's probably like, it's never, like people kind of just like throw it out and people never really like go for it. Um, but I think it's more common on the alternatives that are just like, we should change our view towards it. Right, because then people can be like, oh, really change our view? Bet, still do the app though, let's just change our view about it, right? Like the permutation solved. Um, one that I did not, oh yes? But can you do like, being firm for like, being only, is this like the next version of like air permutation? Like, you can only do like one? Or like, can you provide those like options? Like, okay, fine, if you want to do this, and we can also do this, or this, or this. So the permutation will always be a affirmative argument, right? So the AF would be like, we can do the plan and still do the alternative, right? Um, I guess, I guess I'll understand your question. Can you rephrase it? Like, can you provide those options, like these? Like, you can permutate both and permutate the AF and then the all? Yeah, you can do that when you're on the affirmative, right? Like, you can read like most of these permutations. You'd be like, we can do the AF and the all, we can do the AF through the lens of the alternative, right? Like there are multiple ways we can do both. So yeah, like the AF can give a variety of options for the permutation, right? They can give multiple answers or different perms to be able to be like, here are all the ways that the AF can work together while still doing the alternative, right? So it's like there's different ways to speak. Um, one that I did not talk about that I should have put on here is permutation to each, 
right? This is a fake permutation, I'm not gonna lie. The perm does not exist, but people still do it because it's like cheating, low key. But I still do it, I think it's pretty cool. So permutation do each says, let's say for example, right, let's use the UBI example and the communist party example again, right? The plan says that we should do UBI. The alternative says that instead of doing UBI, we could do communist organizing, right? Permutation do each would be like have whoever wants to do UBI do UBI and then have the communist do the communist party. Like we should separate those two, right? Like the permutation do each. Like you should do your you should do you, I'll do me, there's no interference between each other. Right? So whoever wants to do UBI does UBI. Whoever wants to do communist organizing against capitalism can do organizing and capitalism. Like those two don't directly trade off of each other. It's a fake permutation, it does not exist, but like it, it's still a thing. Yes. Um, what do you mean? Yeah, sure. So when you're negative, you can just make arguments for like why only the alternative is better, right? Or why the ask plan links to all your impacts, right? You don't want to do the plan if the plan causes a bunch of bad stuff to happen, right? So like you just make arguments, it's like, yeah, you want to rock with me, but like, no, we're not doing that. Like, you do all these bad things, and we think what you do is bad, and we think that the alternative by itself is a better method, right? So I think that's the first thing you would do. You just be like, I don't know if y'all heard, but all throughout the debate yesterday, I just kept saying all links are disadvantages to the permutation, right? So any link argument I made against the app is another reason for why the permutation does not work, right? So like, if the app causes economic growth super fast, right? That'd be a disadvantage due to the permutation. Because if communists are trying to stop economic growth, why would fast economic growth be something that the permutation would provide? Does that make sense? Yes. Sorry, so you say like the alt is always like the better option, yeah. but you could Well, no. So you never want to say like the permutation is good when you're negative, right? You're on the negative, you're always going to be like no permutation, definitely not, no, 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 we're not going to do that. Um, so I think like when you are on the negative and you're trying to like defend against the permutation and say that the permutation is bad, you want to just make it very clear that like, look, the alternative is the best method by itself and here are reasons for why the ask plan is bad and we shouldn't do it, right? Like these two are totally incompatible and cannot work together and you just want to give reasons for why doing either the alternative, which is like communist organizing, and doing UBI just does not make sense together. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, of course. Um, any questions? Any other questions about this? May or may make sense so far? Um, what happens if you drop the permutation? You all lose, right? Because then you have conceded the fact that both of these strategies can work together and the plan's a good idea. So never, ever, 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 ever drop the permutation. Ever. You always want to make sure you answer it really, really well. So if you don't, most of the time, you're going to lose. I was debating on an online tournament like the beginning of last year, and I remember I was doing the two R on the critique, and I was like, wow, I have so much time left over. This is so weird. And I kept going, and I had like 15 seconds left, and he goes like, the permutation. And I was like, ah, like, oh, I just lost. I just lost. <laughs> so I was like, hey, you know who it was against? Dana. Oh, yeah, I fucked with I fucked with that one. Mm. That was uh, Technological warfare. Yeah, I went outside that debate. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, right? So it's like, you always wanna make sure you answer the permutation, and when you're on the negative, right? When you're on the affirmative, you can make multiple different permutation arguments showing why the ask plan and the critique can both work together. Simple enough, right? Make kind of sense? Gonna assume so. I have another meme here. If you're reading it and it doesn't make sense, that's again the joke. I'm not gonna explain these memes. All right, let's talk about the O part of F postal. Offense, right? From the disad lecture, do we remember kind of like what I said about offense, right? Offense on the links and the impact section is always going to be that the apps plan is good because of X, Y, Z, right? If they say that you link into doing something, 
the link turn or offense would be like, that link is good because it does X, Y, and Z, right? That impact we cause is good because of X, Y, and Z. So the offense portion of fpostal is always going to say that whatever the app does by the merit of the negative is not a bad thing, but a good thing because of such reasons, right? So you always want to remember that offense will always mean that you prove that the plan is still a good idea, right? So on the dishab lecture, do we remember what link turns are? Yes. Yeah, no, perfect, right? So it's like, if they say we link, that's a good thing because of X, Y, and Z, right? Impact turns the same, right? If they say we cause this impact, we say this impact is good because of X, Y, and Z, right? So it's like, the effects of the plan are good things, and that's what offense says, right? Key note, do not do both of these things at the same time, right? Because this meme right here that I provided, does anyone have a question? Wait, yeah. Wait, you should really that. If we say, Wait, that impact turns that their impacts are actually good because... So it says, the impact turn says that if the app says we cause this impact, we think that impact that we cause is good because of the X, Y, and Z. Right? So, this room meme I have right here says that when you say there's no impact to warning, and then you say impact turn, warming solves agriculture, the link turns so that the app creates more warming, it shows that the app creating more warming is a good thing, right? And you don't want to say that when you're on the negative. So you want to be very careful in the way that you frame your link turn and impact turn arguments because it can make it seem like the app is a good idea, right? So if you make the argument or the negative is a good idea or whatever, right? So it's like, you don't want to say things like impact turn, warming is good because it solves agriculture and you say the app causes more warming, you're saying that the app causing more warming is good because it creates more climate change or soft climate change, right? So it's like, you want to be very careful in the way you answer some arguments sometimes just because they can be contradictory, especially when it comes to the link turn and the impact and stuff. Uh, but we understand offense. I'm yes. still kind of confused with the impact and the impact. Like, so what I really is if we say it, if we say we cause the impact, we say it's good because we want that to happen? Well, that's for like when you're answering the critique, right? So it's like, let's say for example, um, they say that you cause warming. Right, they call it the warming. An impact turn would be like, warming is not bad, it's good because it solves for agriculture, right? So you would say that yes, we do call it agriculture, but we think, or we do call it warming, but causing warming is a good thing because of X, Y, and Z, right? So it's like whatever they say that, whatever impact they say we cause, we think it's not a bad impact, it's a good impact because of these reasons. That makes sense? Okay, cool. Do you have any questions about this? Anything? Um, can both the app and the name both use link terms and impact terms? So impact terms, yes, for both teams. Link terms, usually no. Um, it kind of depends on the argument, though. I think in the context of like critiques, and I think I think in the context of this ads, like no critiques sometimes depend on like how the argument is phrased. Um, but I think impact terms are definitely like. Both, right? Because the impact is just like whatever impact the other team is saying that is good or bad will say it's the opposite. So impact terms can be used for like both. So you should start incorporating that language within your debates, right? Like we have impact turn this impact because we think it's good for X, Y, and Z, right? So like impact turn should definitely be something that like both team uses and something you should incorporate within like your debates. What about, what about links? What about um, yeah, so like when it comes to links, like you won't say it on an off case, right? Because like the app to have off cases. But let's say for example, like if you're making a general argument, like the negative team links to this argument because of X, Y, and Z, right? Like that could be an example of you like using link language on a different side. So like when you say link, you're saying that the other team causes this thing, right? So that's not just like a negative thing, right? You would say like the app links or the negative links into this argument because of X, Y, and Z, right? So you can use both. Um, yeah. Uh, let's talk about solvency deficits, okay? 
So that's the next part of F proposal is S. So a solvency deficit is an argument that the K's alternative cannot solve for the ask impacts, right? For example, communist organizing cannot stop inequality because communist organizing cannot get big enough to overthrow the government. If y'all remember in the debate yesterday, Diego made a very hard push that the alternative did not do anything, right? That is a solvency deficit argument, right? The alternative should have to solve somewhat for the ass impacts, right? As the alternative cannot do that, they do not have a good enough amount of solvency to be able to fix whatever the impacts of the ass they're talking about, right? So if I cannot prove that communist organizing can stop racism or inequality, right? Then that means that the alternative has a lack of solvency, right? The alternative has to have a good enough amount of solvency to be able to fix lots of issues that either the critique outlined or either issues that the AF outlines, right? Because lots of the time critiques will make arguments that are like, we saw for the AF's impact because of X, Y, and Z, right? Communist organizing solves for inequality because under a communist system, there is no inequality, right? But if communist organizing cannot stop inequality for X reasons, then the alternative lacks an amount of solvency to be able to generate the reasons for why the alternative is better than the plan. That makes sense? So it's like the critique's alternative has to have a good enough portion of solvency to be able to solve for some of the AF impacts. And if they can't, the AF can make argument that says that the critique cannot work and should not be voted on because it cannot solve for a portion of whatever the AF is talking about. That makes sense? So it's like, when you think of solvency deficit, you should think of like the alternative that they provided lacks enough solvency to be able to solve for the issue that they say they can, right? So it's just like, the alternative sucks. Like, it can't do anything, which is the reason why you shouldn't vote for it. Questions on that? I feel like that one makes pretty, fairly even sense. Um, T of F postal is going to be theory. How many of us have heard about theory before? I'm guessing not. I thought there should have been like a There's a little bit of There's like competition theory, education theory. Do, do you guys know what like procedurals are? Nope. So procedurals are just basically theory or topicality. Do you guys know what they're intended for? Oh, like topicality is like you can say it like, like the act is that it's negative when on the cave when you can be like, oh, like, this is a topical because like, it doesn't relate to us and it doesn't relate to the topic we're arguing about. Right. Um, but more importantly, the re they're called procedurals. You guys can call them that. In reality, there's not a lot of rules in debate. The, there's only like very few rules, and the rest of them are like unwritten rules, like just just things that people know, like spreading. Spreading is technically okay, right? That's an unwritten rule. Um, what's a what's a solid rule of, of like spursy jumps? Split your prep. Not maybe not split your prep, but like prep time, the amount of prep time you have. What else? Speeches. What else? How much time you have in those speeches? That's basically it. Now, when it comes to procedurals, they're telling you why certain things shouldn't be allowed because because of what? Because it's an issue of what? Education. An issue of education fairness. and fairness. So, education and fairness are the two impacts. They say, like, basically, what they say is that, like, hey, by them doing this, it's completely unfair. That ruins any form of education. That ruins any form of fairness. So them running, for example, um, what would be like a good example of that? Like something that's abusive. Um, condo. Like them running multiple like advocacies that contradict. Do you guys think that's fair? Like, like for example, do you guys remember the debate from yesterday? There was a theory argument. That's called procedural. There was a theory argument. It said. Um, it was in the context of multiple worlds. You should allow contradicting arguments because they allow us to explore the different worlds or the different hypotheticals to which they existed. So for example, uh, the negative team read a dissat and a critique. Independent, like both combined together, they contradict each other. But what the, what, the, what the negative said was like, no, this is a good thing because let's say in one world the critique is happening and the dissat is not happening. In the other world, or like the other hypothetical, the dissent is happening, but the critique is not happening. So it allows us to explore the different things that are wrong with the plan itself, whether they contradict each other or not. So 
You should also think of theory right. It says it's a procedural argument. What is the root word of procedural? Proceed. Proceed, right? So what theory says is that theory precedes any argument that is substantive of the plan, right? That basically means that before we can talk about whether or not the app is a good idea or not, we need to talk about a rule that the other team has broken and why they should lose because of it, right? So it's not debating about whether or not the plan is a good idea, but rather debating about the rules of debate and what people should or should not be able to do, right? So people argue that that argument comes before the plan or precedes the plan because debating about the rules of the debate comes first before debating about whether or not the app is a good idea or not. Does that make sense? So it's like, we should be able to debate about the rules first because rules come first and then the debate comes later, not the other way around, right? So that's why it's called a procedural argument because it precedes anything else that happens in that debate, right? So theory arguments can be made against the alternative as well, right? For example, utopian alternatives are a voting issue, right? Let's say, for example, instead of doing the AF, my alternative was like, Let's create a whole new world on Mars with like flying rainbows and unicorns and stuff, right? Why is that good to debate about? Or more so, why is that bad to debate about? Because it's unrealistic. It's unrealistic, right? I can't have flying unicorns because unicorns literally don't exist. Why is debating about things that literally don't exist a good thing, right? Why is that fair to the, uh, uh, why is that fair to the affirmative team where the negative can just create whatever alternative they want and say it's a good idea without any intellectual backing or realistic methods to whatever the alternative is, right? So an example of this would be the utopian alternatives are a voting issue. They are unfair and promote unrealistic alternatives that we can't actually implement in the status quo right now that impact our education and makes it extremely unfair for us to debate, right? So that would be an example of a theory argument. We think that the negative team has broken rules by making this utopian alternative, which is bad for debate because it's unfair and unrealistic, and they should lose because of it, right? So theory arguments are always used to create offense on the level of the debate that isn't just about the substance of the app or the alternative, right? So the app or either team, because either team, any team can run theory, let's make that clear. But in the context of reading theory against a critique, you can make arguments for why their level or their method or their rules of debate or what how they like perceive in debate is bad, and that creates a level of offense that they can like generate stuff from that isn't just about whether or not the alternative is a bad idea or not, right? So it's like they can yes. Um, can you give us another example of the Sure. So for example, right, let's say for example, the alternative against a policy alpha was like Communists should like communists should take over a country and just use that country for themselves and like fight against every other capitalist country with that thing, right? It's like how is that realistic? You know? Like what what piece of evidence do you have to support that that's actually a thing? Right? Like people should not be able just to make up random alternatives and just be like, yeah, we can ride unicorns to Russia and clear out Russian people and make it only communists and like get magic wand from Harry Potter's universe to like zippy zappy boo away capitalists. Like no, like that's not real, you know? So when people try to make alternatives that are unrealistic, the affirmative can say that that's a voting issue or a reason why they should lose because that's unfair because like how do you argue against flying unicorns other than saying that they're not real, you know, like that's gaslighting me. I know unicorns aren't real. I've never seen one. I know they'll actually do this. Also, why is that a good debate to have? You know, why is debating about unrealistic fairy tales a good thing? What education do we learn about that, right? I'm not going to go out that room and be like, oh my God, unicorns are real. Why? So people can laugh at me? No, that's not educational. Like, I didn't learn anything from that debate. So people say that all the time, utopian alternatives are bad, and theory should come first before we debate about whether or not it's a good idea. Yes? Do you use theory to, like, I guess, take it 
policies and how unfairness can be difficult to make to apply to your other like arguments? Yeah, so really good that you brought that up actually. So when we go back to framework, right? Framework is also an example of a procedural argument, right? So when you make the argument that like we should be able to like focus on the actual policy of the plan rather than like focus on something else, that is a theory argument that the affirmative team makes, right? So it's like, yes, that is a perfect example of a theory argument you can read against teams that are like, forget that, we should focus on the plan if it's a good idea. That's an example of theory right here, right? I should have said that earlier. But yeah, great reaffirmation. That's definitely something you can do. That's what you should always do against K teams because they'll often like get all their like arguments based off of the way that the plan is presented. Also, something really important that I did not talk about. Um, this is more of an ethos thing when it comes to debate. But as a K debater, I'll tell you right now, K debaters can smell fear off of other debaters very easily. So if you act like you're afraid of the critique, it only empowers critical teams more. So what I will tell you is that when you are debating critique, do not be afraid because it talks about identity, right? Or it talks about personal issues. Because again, there are ways that you can debate against these type of arguments without it being violent or being scared. But what I will tell you, especially for those who are planning to do varsity sometime soon, is that again, these K debaters can smell fear like dogs. I know because I'm one of those people. So it's like, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you are afraid to debate critique. Debate critique should be fun, right? So you shouldn't let your opponents get that competitive edge over you because they know that you're freaking out because like you don't know about critiques, you know? So what I will say is do your research about critiques, learn about them even if you don't want to run them, and don't be afraid of them most of all because K debaters, and at least really good K debaters, can smell fear from when debaters are nervous about debating the critique. So, or if you want to become one of the debaters who run critiques and smell the fear off people, that's cool too. It's fun. I like making people scared. Cool. Do we understand theory? Cool, 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 cool. The next one is A. A stands for alternative defense. Okay. So all defense are arguments that said that the alternative cannot solve its own impacts, right? So solvency deficit arguments are arguments that says that the alternative cannot solve for the app, right? All defense says that the alternative can't even solve for its own impacts. Like, how are you trying to pay somebody else when you broke yourself, bro? Like, you can't pay nobody, right? So it's like the alternative defense argument just says that the alternative itself cannot solve for its own impacts, right? For example, communists cannot solve for capitalism because communists cannot convince enough communists to revolt against the system. That means that their alternative fails to solve their own impacts because their movements are not big enough, right? So that example is an argument that says that, hey, your alternative might be a good idea in theory, but your alternative is going to fail because you cannot make enough people become communists to solve your own impacts of capitalism causing extinction, right? So all defense differs from a solvency deficit. I'm gonna ask again, why or what's the difference between solvency deficit and alternative defense? So you say that all doesn't actually solve, right? So like which one's which? Uh, so all defense say like the, the alternative can solve for its own issues, and then when you say that there's not there's a solvency defense, it's like like them like like it's just not realistic. Like they're not being really realistic, so they don't really solve for anything in general, and it just leads to like an uneducated. Close. That's more so the theory stuff. There's a difference. There's a solvency deficit and alternative defense. You're right on the alt defense part, but you're not right on the solvency deficit part. Oh, that the K can't solve for the abs impacts? Right. So, solvency deficit says that you cannot solve for the abs impacts. Alternative defense says that the alt cannot solve for its own impact, right? Solvency deficit can't solve for the abs. All defense, the all cannot solve for its own stuff. So remember to keep those two as the thing. Like they're like similar arguments, but they're different in the way that like they function and are deployed against alternatives, right? So basically, it says that your alternative sucks and you can't do anything to solve for the, I don't mean to put solve for our app. The all cannot do anything to solve for its own impact. Do you know who this dude is? Probably someone here. Yes. 
Oh my goodness. Boom, clap it up. Yeah. Communism, you feel me? Uh, yeah, that's Karl Marx. Uh, if the Lando camp decides to stick with like the Communist Party stuff, I definitely recommend at least knowing about who Karl Marx is because he's going to be very important when it comes to like the alternative about like the Communist Party. Um, so yeah. Last. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Basically, I, I've had a typo at the end. This is supposed to say it solved their own impact. We all good to move on? The last letter in F postal is link defense. Link defense is referring to making arguments that prove that even if the app links, the link is not big enough to cause an impact. Andres, yeah. will you agree to give me a dollar? Sure. Okay. Um, that dollar you gave me causes capitalist extinction to happen. Like that one dollar, nothing else. Yes, I should have given it to Literally. Why is that argument silly? Yes. It's not uh, like it's not gonna like it's a tiny amount, like a tiny dollar given to the phone will crash the entire time. Right, like that one dollar is not big enough to be able to cause whatever the impact the critique says are happening, right? So the example I gave here is that even if Isaiah gives me a dollar, it's not big enough to cause capitalism to lead to extinction because it's literally one dollar, bro, right? Like there has to be a sufficient amount of whatever the app does to trigger whatever the impact is, right? Another example of link defense, like we said earlier, are just no links, right? We do not link to capitalism because UBI is inherently a communist prospect, right? It's, it's like a communist idea, example of that, right? So you should think of link defense as just two things. Either one, no, we don't link to the app because X, Y, and Z. Or even if we do link, the link is not big enough to cause the impact because it's only one dollar, bro. Or like, it's only a couple million. The link would need like billion dollars to Right? Does that make sense? So it's like link defense refers to either no linking on the arguments, like, oh, we don't cause whatever the link is, or even if we do link, the link is not big enough to cause whatever impact it is. Does that make sense? Cool, 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 cool. Do we still need time to write this down? After this slide, if there's anything else I need to go back to, let me know and I can go back. No linking is really just like all the things are in the right? Kinda. Another thing would be like either it's not realistic or like the app doesn't do that because of the X, Y, and Z. Um, is there any slides that we need to go back from or back to something we didn't get about like the F postal part. Okay, do we have any question other than that? Everything makes sense sort of? Cool, 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 cool. Um what I will say is that nobody understood how to answer a critique coming into this lecture. My question is, raise your hand if you feel a little more confident in answering your feet now. Alright, those better not be like like petty hands. Like do we like generally feel like we know how to answer a critique better? Yes, no, eh. Eh, okay. Is there anything that we're like still iffy about? I would say the first thing is like oh yeah. Okay. Framework is Okay, I'll, I'll get to that right now. Did you have a question? Uh, I just think of an example for this only. Okay, cool. Yeah. So let's say, for example, right, let's use the UBI and the communist organizing stuff again as an example. Okay? So the alternative would say for the negative that communist organizing can stop inequality, right? Because the whole idea of communism is that there should not be an economic system that relies on differences to function, right? Everybody should be equal 
in a communist world, right? Nobody's above anybody else. So what the alternative would say is that communism solves for inequality because under a communist system, everybody is equal, right? So a solvency deficit would be an app argument that's like, even if that is the case, the K cannot do those things because the K lacks something to do that in the first place, right? So for example, the one I gave is that communist organizing cannot stop inequality because there are literally just not enough communists to do the alternative, right? To be able to have a new system that required millions of people to convert over to communism, right? But the example I gave with the solvency deficit is just like, you cannot solve your own impacts because there are literally not enough communists to be able to do the alternative, right? Overthrowing the government takes a lot of people, right? Like you would assume so, right? Like you can't just have one person do it. But the solvency deficit makes the argument, it's just like, you have to have enough people to be able to do that and the alternative just does not have it like that. That makes sense, Simon, now? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, it's just like the idea of framework is complicated. Like, okay, it's cool. Like, like what I understood is like framework, okay, framework is like in a way like you tell the judge how you, how you want them to judge around, but then you're like, it really comes down to like the hypothetical things, like all oh, these two worlds, like, I don't know, like that's really confusing. Okay, so I guess a different way to phrase it is just like, this debate is all whether or not about if the plan should not pass, right? The entire, oh, yeah, the other question. Are critiques like hard for the groups or is there So yeah, they're usually card. There are some critiques that don't have any cards, but like that's only in like the varsity division you might experience that, but most of the time critiques do have cards. So for example, like, in the JV debate, the packet gave me cards for the capital critique that I could use, right? So it's like critiques will lots of times will be like have cards that are like related to it. And lots of those cards are come from like philosophers, right? And people who like support certain philosophers. So they're not like data analysis most of the time, right? They're like people who have like socio-political understandings of the world and will like write about that. That makes sense? Um, really quick, back to your question. So. The entire debate, every debate that you'll have in a policy debate, most of the time, will be about whether or not the plan should or should not pass, right? Framework just says that we should be able to have that debate, right? And the judge should be able to let that debate happen, right? Because if the critique is like, no, we should not debate about the hypothetical actions of the government, right? Like, we should do other things. Framework just makes the argument that, we, no, we should be able to debate about whether or not this plan should pass. And I should be able to weigh my impacts against whatever the critique says we should do instead. Does that make a little more sense? It's like, it's like the, because like the, the K would be like, oh, like the example is like Mars and unicorns, like, oh, it's like, it's just unrealistic. Well, or no, 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 no. I mean, like the K would be like, oh, um, like reject like, the app. Yeah, like reject yeah. the app entirely. We're not policy makers, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Be like, no, like this is an educational space. Like, yeah. And like, this is the point of debate. Yeah, right. This is the point that, this is like the point of debate. This is why we came here, right? And we came here to test the app. We should be able to do that against the critique, right? That make more sense now? Yeah, now it actually makes sense. Okay, Perfect. yeah. So like, it's just like, we should be able to weigh the app and be able to run the app and test the app. Framework just says that we should do that because of fairness and education. Right. Um, any other questions? Yes. So let's, I, I think you're a little confused, which is like fine, I understand. Let's make something very clear in your notes, right? So let's write down the difference between a solvency deficit versus alternative defense. Okay. So let's make sure we set, we like, let's make the distinction very clear. I, I can see some of you being confused about that. A solvency deficit says that the K cannot solve for the affirmative's impacts. Solvency deficit 
the alternative cannot solve for the aft's impacts. Yes. Uh, I thought like the K, like K lecture was like you don't always have to solve for the aft's impacts. Well, you don't, right? But some alternatives claim to do such, uh -huh. right? For example, the cap K, right? The cap K. So you know how the aft is like the plan stops like racial inequality, right? Or it stops poverty, right? The capitalism critique says that communist organizing can actually solve for that aspect of the app, right? Because communist organizing would get rid of inequality because communists think that inequality should not be a thing. Everybody should be equal, right? So in a sense, some alternative says that like, oh, your advantage is about being like equal. Communist organizing also does that, which is why we should do it, right? So sometimes the critique says that we should solve for the app, sometimes it doesn't. But when we're talking about apps that do try and solve, or critiques that do try to solve for the ass impacts, right? Um, a solvency deficit would give reason for why the K cannot solve for the affirmative team impact. As well as solvency deficit, okay? Solvency deficit says that the K cannot solve for the app. Alt defense says that the K cannot solve for its own impacts, right? The critique cannot solve for the impacts it talks about. For example, if the capitalism critique says that capitalism is bad and causes it extinction, an example of alternative defense would be that communist organizing fails because it can't build enough people to stop capitalism, right? So it's not about solving equality, it's about solving for capitalism causing extinction. And alt defense makes the argument that the alternative can't even save itself, right? It can't even stop itself. It can't even solve for itself. Because there are other reasons for why capitalism will probably stay in place post alternative. So let's repeat it back to me. What is a solvency deficit? That was one person for like 20 people taking notes. So try it one more time, right? What is a solvency deficit? The K cannot solve for the ass impacts. Cool. The K cannot solve for the ass impacts. What is alternative defense? When the K cannot solve for the ass impacts. What is a solvency deficit? When the K cannot solve for the ass impacts. Okay, let's let's try this a little louder. What is a solvency deficit? When the K cannot solve for the ass impacts. Isai, what is a solvency deficit? Bro, okay. Let's try it all together. Take a look at the board really quick. Isai, look at the board so you have the answer. Bro, this is a group activity. This is a democracy. Okay, we're all going together. You got it, bro? Yeah. All right. All together. Wow. What is a solvency deficit? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but we're talking about the critique, buddy. Um, cool. What is alternative defense? That sucked. Let's do that again. Come on, in unison. What is alternative defense? Cool. It seems like we know the difference now, right? So the solvency deficit says that the K cannot solve for the AFS impacts. Alternative defense says that the alternative cannot solve for its own impact. Simple, right? See what a little repetition and forced yelling makes you do? It makes you understand what you're talking about a little easier. So don't hate the game. Don't hate the play and hate the game. You feel me? Um, <laughs> how do we now feel about answering critiques? OK, how about we do this? Oh, yes, go ahead. Yes. So it's just like the, the acronym for it. Every, yeah. Every person just stands for the acronym that you'll do it. So if I go back to the bongo cab team, um, if F postal, as you can see, goes down this way, right? So it just says F stands for framework, P stands for the permutation, O stands for offense, S stands for solvency deficit, A stands for all defense, and L stands for lick defense, right? Well, yeah, you ideally want to use all of these, right? But sometimes the conditions are just not there for you to be able to do all of them, right? But F postal outlines the best strategy to debate against critiques when you're at. So it's like all these together are best. That makes sense. Yes? 
Yeah. So again, a recap on framework. Framework just says that we should be able to test the plan against whatever the alternative is. But we should still be allowed to debate about whether or not the plan is a good idea or not. That's framework. Just like we should be able to think about whether or not the plan is a good idea. We should be able to debate about whether or not the plan is a good idea. Because if we can't, then the app has no ground to stand on. Right? The app can't debate. Um, so let's try this. All right. Um, let's use a scale of five fingers, okay? On a scale from one finger to five fingers, how confident do we feel about answering the critique when we are affirmative? See some three, see some fours. Wait, he's like, he's like, throw up the four. What? Throw up the four. Right. You guys want to know some facts? Four's down, always. You know why? Because UCLA sucks. The, the, the shade is great. Um, my bad. Wait, can we do that again? Isai, you distracted me. Fall one to five? Wait, do, do it again. I, I didn't see you. Four to five. Four, or whatever. Four's down, though. Like, no, Isai, stop distracting me. Four, 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 four. Yeah, four is down if you have a four. Four is down if you do a four. Okay, three. I see a three. I see a three. I don't see your hand, dude. How do you feel? Three? Cool. Uh, everybody in the back, can y'all raise them high because y'all are like really tall. Three, can I count? Yeah, three. Three, 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 three. Okay, what would help us when it comes to anything else? Like, threes are pretty good, but I want to see if we can do a four or five for the people who said three. So take a second to analyze what you still think you don't understand or what you think might be difficult about answering the three, and then raise your hand so I have an idea so I can answer. Yes. Sure. So usually within your packet, it should have like a block where it says like framework 2AC, and then it should have whatever the framework answers are there. So you would just end up reading those whenever they read the critique against you, and we just make the argument like we should be able to weigh the app against the critique for X reasons, blah, blah, blah. It's fair, it's educational, et cetera. So that's like where you would find it at. Is that like that answer your question? Yeah, so it's like it's you, it should always usually be in your packet. If you're doing varsity debate, for example, when you have open evidence, you can always just find like a framework block that applies to your plan and just use that. Or you just write your own, you know? Because like writing them, like, it's super easy. Like, I wrote this one in like, you know, 25 seconds just because like I've debated so many like apps that went for framework like on the affirmative so many times this season. It's just like it becomes second nature when every single negative round you're going for a critique. But like, it's pretty simple, right? Uh, so you usually see like an interpretation, right? Like the app should be able to weigh the plan or the impact of the plan against the alternative, blah, blah, blah. And then you want to put reasons for why that's good, right? Or why debating the plan or having the app be the plan is better. And then just like prefer what we said because we're doper than the other team, you know? So that's all I was saying. Um, any last minute questions before we go back to the lab? Okay, other people who were out of three, is there anything else I can provide to you information-wise to help you understand a little better? I'll give y'all a couple more seconds to think. Okay, that being said, my last question is put up a one if you like critiques. Actually, no, pull up a four upside down if you like critiques. Pull up a four upwards if you don't like critiques and you hate them. Answering or running Down is good, right? Down is you like critiques. Up is that you hate critiques. Wow, that's so based in the back. That's crazy. Eastside, do you see that, bro? Wait, oh, show, show everybody do it for Eastside. Wait, do what? Do what? So four is down or if you like K's, and four is up if you don't like K's. All right, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, if you like running case, put your fingers down. And four is down. <laughs> we, we have some base people in the back, bro. People are like, that's amazing. See you, Moses.
All right, cool, 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 cool. Four, four is down for critiques because we love K, but you don't have to do it. You um, do? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, that's it. Yay. Crowd, you know, I'm going to pass the money basket. Yeah, pass, pass the money basket around. <laughs>